We are here with Aaron Martinez and Jennifer Garaldana, and I am so grateful. We had a wonderful presentation with them, and thank you both for being here for this conversation, um, this follow-up conversation. Aaron, I have a question starting with you. You spoke about a term known as double consciousness. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could define that for us here and perhaps speak to how youth might experience that in an even more challenging way than adults might. Sure, such a good question. So yeah, I brought up W.E.B. Du Bois and um, double consciousness. And I mentioned in the presentation, um, specifically speaking towards my background, right, which is African-American. Um, even though we are African, we're also American and we're constantly reminded that we are a stolen people who reside in a land that we are forced to build for free, right? So we live and still live with the tension of societal and self-regulation of our bodies and actions in order to be considered acceptable as fully human in society while also trying to live fully and authentically. So as young people um, and as someone who is African-American, it is interesting how we have African roots and we have our American roots. And so as an adult, I've really, I grew up in more of an American household. It was a black household but wasn't distinctly African, you know? So I've had to really um, do my own work in looking up African practices and different things that I know that are in my roots and in my history in order to just really honor my ancestors, honor African practices and traditions and all of those things that aren't really taught to us. Um, we have to really seek them out. And I think something too is I've, I've gone to predominantly uh, white institutions my whole life. Uh, I didn't go to a really, I guess, considered um, diverse school, which I went to a historically black college. So I went from predominantly white institutions to a black college <laughs> for college. And I think something that black and brown and BIPOC students feel is when there isn't a lot of diversity in those schools, they're trying to figure out how to be fully authentic in their skin, whether that's black, brown, Asian, Latina, you know, Filipino, what have you, but also still trying to be with the mainstream culture, which is white. So how do we fit in? How do we, you know, our hair, for instance, that's so huge in the black community. And in so many of our Fuller Youth Institute interviews, hair was such a big thing for black women in particular. Like, do I wear my hair straight? Do I wear it curly? I mean, all my friends, my white girlfriends have straight hair and my hair is curly. And I mean, it's different and I like it, but everyone else says, oh, I really love your hair when it's straight. <laughs> you know, and not being able to like even just that in itself and how that relates to identity and black people aren't born with cur with with straight hair. <laughs> and, you know, like it, there's so many layers to it and there's so many experiences of that double consciousness in the bodies of young people from it's not minuscule, but it, it I know to them, to students are like, well, it's my hair. I want to wear it how I want to wear it. But also other people were, were their hair this way and maybe it's better for me to do it because I'm more accepted this way. Mm -hmm. So it gets real deep, Yeah, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Well, and I, I can only, I can't imagine, I truly can't imagine. And, but I wonder just the mental acrobatics you have to go through. Right. Not, not just, not you in particular, but just in oh, general folks uh -huh. in this situation. Um, yeah. That's, that sounds really exhausting. It just yeah. sounds really exhausting. It is exhausting. And even in terms of, I talk about this in the race, in the guide to like black joy, always being misconstrued as being loud and obnoxious mm -hmm. or just like disruptive when we're really just being like black. I, I see black joy as resistance. Like it's, it's living in our bodies and our own skin and just really expressing ourselves the, the way that we do, which is joyful and excited and we love to dance and we love to laugh and all those things. But in public spaces, so many times, like black people are like, oh, they're being loud. They're being too much. They're over there, you know? When And then in those instances, I've even been with my family where they're like, let's not be that loud black table. Like, let's not be them, you know? Especially in certain restaurants or in certain spaces, like that self-regulation 
And that mental gymnastics, like you said, in terms of really having a consciousness of who you are, how you're being perceived from others on the outside as a person of color, and then seeing like, well, I don't want to be perceived as that person. So let me kind of dilute myself or my experience so that other people feel comfortable, you know? Um, so that's that's what he means in terms it really is like you said a mental gymnastics and it yeah. is exhausting and I it, you know I learned about W.B. Du Bois in college and you know having that I was like oh that's what it is you know like I said giving youth this language yeah. to, to their experiences is so important I think for them to know and I think especially in a in a time where social media is so prevalent I think mm-hmm. double consciousness is even Uh, has a new layer of filters and finsta and a curated identity of who you present yourself to be and -hmm. how you want people to perceive who you are. So it's, I've learned so much from Aaron and others about how as people of color, um, we have this constant fight of whose perception we're going to let actually guide our actions, guide what we do. And so when the 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 big identity question is who are you Mm -hmm. and with students of color you have to I've had to in my own life had to say well kind of what Jesus did with his disciples to say well who do you say that I am Mm -hmm. and who does the community say that I am and who does this this people say that I am and then be able to first tease out and give them give young people the space to say what what does your family expect you to be what does pop culture expect you to be yeah. what is your social media says you are <laughs> and once you've parsed all of those things out if Jesus himself asked questions of identity and asked his friends who do you say that I am I just wonder how much more space we need to offer young people to make those identity questions in our youth group gatherings in our friendships because yeah. there's a lot of layers to answering the who are you yeah. and it is way it's too simplistic to answer. I am a child of God, even though that is the answer we want him to get to without the parsing out of all the different consciousness and perceptions and pressures. The, I am a child of God doesn't quite feel as powerful unless you unpacked all the ways that you are told that you aren't, that you don't belong. Um, And this is kind of the I call it the silent gymnastics of the heart and mind, because that's why it's, it's, it's exhausting. Um, but unless there's a, a kin or a somebody like, you know, for me, it would be to go to my friend, Aaron and say, Aaron, do you feel this? Aaron, do you know this? Um, it's a, it's the unspoken cognitive gymnastics that many of our students carry. Okay. And so when students start to check out, when students start to behave in ways that aren't quite um, aligning, my first question is, what part about who they are, are they not able to bring in this space? Mm. Uh, because I disassociate and I check out and I kind of go, when I feel there's a part of me that just isn't welcomed in that space. Yeah. And right. so to look out for those cues where we have missed opportunities to invite young people to parse those questions of identity out and for students of color in particular, it's a unique gymnastic that requires just more tenderness and more pitching of questions, just like Jesus did and say, who do, who do they say you are? And who do they say you are? Mm-hmm. But who do you know to be? And how are you going to respond to all these constant pressures of perceptions of belonging of what people expect you to be? Yeah. 